William Blythe, at the age of 19, received federal authorization to operate a ferry crossing where the Hiwassee and Tennessee rivers converge. The year was 1809. When William Blythe of mixed Cherokee descent began operating his ferry over these waters, he had no idea the events that would take place on this very spot. Events that would impact his own Cherokee Nation and the United States forever. Ten years after he began his ferry business in 1819, Blythe relinquished his loyalty to the Cherokee Nation. He and his son were given a land reserve of 640 acres. This is the land you now stand on. Here was located Blythe's homestead and ferry. There was a uh, trading post here where people, travelers on the river, because river travel was really a, a big thing back then, you know, um, more so than the roads. Blythe's other holdings later included a second ferry, 13 slaves, 15 slave cabins, a mill and cotton gin, a blacksmith shop, several barns and outbuildings, and thousands of apple and peach trees. His wealth in 1836 would have been estimated in today's currency at more than $400,000. In 1830, United States President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act. The Cherokee Nation was forced to give up all its land east of the Mississippi for white settlement and relocate to the Oklahoma Territory. Several thousand Cherokee died on the, on the trip out to Oklahoma. Um, they were deprived of their homes, uh, every possession that they had. They were taken and held in stockades uh, until the removal took place. The Cherokee called this journey the Trail of Tears. This ferry ran every day. It was part of this community. It was part of these surrounding counties. Blythe's Ferry transported nine Cherokee companies down this northern route of the Trail of Tears. Most crossed the Tennessee River here from September to November, 1838. The Cherokee totaled nearly 10,000. Water levels were low due to a severe drought, forcing some of the Cherokee to camp here for up to six weeks, waiting to cross the Tennessee River into an uncertain future. William Blythe went west with his Cherokee wife. The Cherokee Removal Memorial Park is dedicated to the more than 4,000 who died and cried on the very ground where you stand. Today, we are champions of human rights and oppose the practice of ethnic cleansing. However, we have a chapter in our history involving the removal of the five civilized tribes from the southeastern United States to make land available for white settlement. The Cherokee Removal Memorial Park is intended to interpret and educate park visitors about the forced removal of the Cherokees from their ancestral land. It also teaches about unique wildlife in the area and provides recreational opportunities. The park is situated near the former Blythe home at the mouth of the Hiwassee River, where it joins the Tennessee River. This junction has been a significant intersection for development of Native American culture for centuries. In 1994, the ferry was discontinued when the Highway 60 bridge was completed. Today, the ramp is used as a boat launch and fishing area. Within the visitor center, you will find a library to assist visitors in tracing their Cherokee ancestry to learn Native American history, study the Trail of Tears timeline, and explore local history and archeology. span We have early Cherokee history here where the, the chiefs of the Cherokee actually went to England and visited the King of England. Um, then we tell the story about the uh, Trail of Tears and what led up to it. Visit the history wall as it describes early culture and how Cherokee evolved from hunter-gatherers to a literate and highly civilized culture with a government similar to ours. Read how the Cherokees were pressured to give up their land, which resulted in an illegitimate treaty, which they never recognized. Learn how they were rounded up and placed in stockades under deplorable conditions in which thousands died. Follow the disastrous failed attempts by the army to move them and how they finally agreed to self-removal. Stand along the memorial wall and read the names of the 2,535 heads of household from the Henderson Roll edition of the 1835 census of the Cherokee Nation taken 
to identify those to be removed. Behind them, find a number indicating how many household members were also moved. About 4,200 of the 16,542 Cherokees identified perished as a result of the Cherokee removal in 1838. This wall is the closest thing to a headstone they will have. The memorial wall is intended to humanize them. They were not wild savages, but at least as civilized as most that replaced them. According to the 1835 census, they were farmers, mechanics, weavers, spinners, and businessmen. Many were literate in Cherokee and or English. The water and land routes taken by the immigrating Cherokees are depicted on the sunken floor of the outdoor amphitheater. The Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency has provided a wildlife viewing shelter in the park on the Knoll, overlooking Hiwassee Island. They have established a resident population of American bald eagles in the area. TWRA plants grain crops on the island and nearby shore to support migrating waterfowl. Over a hundred species of birds and other wildlife can be seen in the area. Early Hamilton, Mississippi, Dallas Creek, and Cherokee Indians occupied Hiwassee Island for hundreds of years. The DeSoto Expedition visited the island in 1540. So there's a big story to tell here, and we've really only touched the surface of it. As a young man, Sam Houston lived on Hawassi Island, then known as Jolly's Island, and was adopted by Chief John Jolly, who named him the Raven. On your way to the park today, you pass this venerable oak tree monument. This oak and monument were dedicated to the memory of young Sam Houston and others who passed under this tree on the Trail of Tears, witnessing the removal and other events that shaped the region's history. If you haven't done so, stop at the monument, imagine its once great standing in the forest, and take a moment to meditate on the memory of those who passed under this venerable oak. Every visitor that we have, you know, they just marvel at, at this Cherokee Park because, you know, we are in an out of the way place and uh, but people are always so surprised when they get here, you know, uh, because it is a beautiful place and it does tell a story that needs to be told. The Cherokee Removal Memorial Park is here for you to witness and remember, to learn for the future from the past.